Love staying informed? Subscribe now and get unlimited access to local news, weather, and sports for just 99 cents a month for your first three months at inform.news join. Read every story, listen to every podcast, and download the apps that keep you informed and on the go 24 hours a day. So head to inform.news slash join right now to subscribe. What are you waiting for? Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month at inform.news slash join. Plane talk and l- listen. One of the stories I've been I've been writing a lot about a lot, and and in fact, our last guest here on the podcast were some folks, uh, a li- a, the director of my local library here in Minot, uh, as well as someone from the ACLU talking about legislation in Bismarck uh, at the legislature that would, in in my mind, would would censor books. Now, proponents of that legislation don't agree with that characterization, and in fact. On this episode of the show, we're going to be talking with one of those proponents, uh, Senator Yana Murdoch. Uh, she is a uh, Republican in uh, in the state Senate, like I said. But before we get to that, we should welcome back to the show Chad Oban, who uh, agreed to sit in for a guest host. Ben Hansen is uh, was busy this week, and I asked Chad if he would come back for a show and uh, and sit in, and uh, and he agreed. Chad, welcome back. Hey, it's good to be here. Uh, I will tell you, as I told Rob when I got on, I'm worried about the bandwidth that the Fargo Forum website's going to have with the Oban bump of me being back here this week. I mean, the listenership is going to shoot shoot up. Uh, and I, no I, I, Chad, Chad, you're only back because I'm on. I know it. We all know it. <laughs> uh, I, uh, Just be clear. I agreed before I knew. <laughs> yeah, He didn't know who the guest was going to be. I didn't know who the guest was going to be when I asked him, um, I, okay. that, which is kind of how I book these shows. I just uh, I look at what's in the news and, and try to be topical. So, Senator Murdo, first of all, before we get into, into the book stuff, I do want to ask the story um, on KFYR are about you and another Republican state senator, Senator w- Wabama. Wobama? Am I pronouncing that? I That's don't... correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Senator Michael Wab- w- Wobama, um, turning your back during an invocation um, provided. Now, for people who don't know, every every day when the legislature starts its floor session, there's an invocation and there's a, a rotating uh, uh, cast of of religious leaders who who give that invocation from various faiths um this one was was reverend dr leanne simmons from first presbyterian church in bismarck as she was delivering her invocation you and senator wabama turned your back so this happened back in early february but it's just now i guess making news kfyr picked it up and i wanted to ask you about it can you what 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 happened there why did you turn your back well, I tell you, Rob, I appreciate you having me on. I, I think it's really a non-story, uh, honestly, but I'll give you a little bit of background. And I told KFYR, and that's all I'm going to say, is that I don't believe that uh, the, the, the pulpit of prayer should be lobbying. And uh, throughout January and uh, that particular day, um, I had gone to leadership several times and said, uh, on behalf of many senators, frankly, that there was a lot of lobbying going on. I think prayers are... Uh, Vertical, not horizontal. Uh, you don't have to be preaching from from that p- uh, pulpit uh, when we have prayer, and we had certain uh, issues in uh, in committees at that time. And um, I don't think any of the issues in committees should be part of part of that uh, prayer thing. And so it was quite organic. Wabama and I had not uh, decided on it either way, but I have freedom of speech, just like anybody else in in the, in our country that kneel or turn their backs on things. Um, I don't appreciate. Um, those clergy that come in and and uh, bring up issues that are set before us in committee. I think there's a place in committee to do that. I just I just to, to give context. I want to I want to read the, the part of what what she was saying that with that that as on the video and, and the video is available online. People can go look at it. But as you're turning your back, this is what she was saying. She was saying, "Creator of the universe and all people therein, you who formed humankind in your image, placing them in this world and all their diversity, differing colors, genders, races, ethnicities, and language, we praise you for your spl- for the splendor of your creation and the love that motivated your hand on this earth." That was the point at which you turned down. What what in that do you disagree with? I think the we all know now in this building and across the nation that the word gender is no longer defined what we thought it was defined as. Um, as a matter of fact, when we deal with law, we we, we deal with a, a definition of sex, which is one man, one woman. Gender is now fluid, and there's a gender theology out there. And so 
We had already uh, seen that in several prayers where it wasn't just gender, but other things. So let me give you an example. I think it was the same day, if not another day, that there was heavy lobbying in the back of the Senate chamber, which there should be, between the credit unions and the banks. I would have probably turned my back too if, if the minister said, Lord, we you know bless the credit unions today, um, or Lord uh, bless white people today, or you know any anything that has to do with what we are going through. I, I just think it's unnecessary, mm. and I'm not ashamed of it. I'll do it again uh, if I need to. And I think we just need to send a message that we're working hard on issues for North Dakota here. We're elected from different parts of the state. We present uh, we represent our constituents, but I, I just don't take kindly to uh, to a lobbying from the prayer pulpit. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Senator Murdahl, with all due respect, everybody does have a gender. So, I mean, I'm not sure that that was, I mean, I've read the quote several times and watched the prayer. I didn't see any lobbying. And I, I mean, I, I assume that if that's the opinion of you and Senator Wobama, the next time there's a, um, a clergy that talks about the sanctity of life and the importance of you guys protecting life, that you'll turn your back to that as well? Or is it just when you interpret something as being lobbying against what you believe? To be honest with you, I told Rob when I came on here, I was going to stick to, stick to the library bill, and I've said what I need to say on that issue. Okay. But All just, right, you know, watching it, it was it was pretty performative. It didn't look like you and yeah. Senator Wolbema just did it. Uh, I mean, I don't know why you'd do it if you wouldn't want to talk about it now. Um, so I just, I hope that our, our legislators are consistent with how they handle these things. I agree you have the First Amendment right to do that. But I also think as an elected official, you, people deserve to know why you did it and why you yeah. did it when people were praying for different ethnicities and different genders, but you don't do it when other people, um, from my perspective, would be lobbying from the pulpit. In, in, in defense, Senator Murdoch, we asked, she answered. Uh, let's let's move on, because I did invite her on to talk about the bills. The, the bill in question that's made it, and there's, there's two bills, House Bill 1205. Now, Senator Murdoch has told me she's not as familiar with House Bill 1205. It's been referred to uh, judiciary in the Senate. I don't believe it's had a committee hearing yet. At least it's not on the website. No, no. Um, actually, I'm out of I'm out of the Judiciary Committee to talk to you. I'm on the Judiciary Committee, and it has not been scheduled yet. Has not been scheduled mm -hmm. yet. All right, but what Senate Bill 2360 has passed the Senate, um, and this bill. Um, uh, why is this bill necessary, Yana? And that's that's one of the things that I've been struggling with because I I've spoken to our our local library director. She's been the director of the library serving one of North Dakota's largest communities for the better part of a decade. She said in all that time, there's been four challenges, um, and they weren't really a big deal. I think three of them, they ended up moving a book from the children's section to the adult section. I don't see a problem. I, I, I don't know what, what problem this, this bill is trying. So I guess maybe explain to us, what, why are you supporting this? Why do you think this is necessary? Well, I strongly support this because uh, we had parents come in an enormous amount of emails and texts and and and, and uh, parents coming in, and it isn't about one book. I mean, I think uh, one of the sponsors now, and I'm not a sponsor, but so there's between 20 and 40 books. And you know, in the past, uh, Rob, you you know me well. I'm very passionate against sex trafficking or any any sexualization of our children of our minors. We sit in our uh, judiciary committee all the time, and we we pass laws to protect and to to limit things that minors cannot cannot do. Um, I have been there, done that. I, I've been in missions. I worked in the red light district as a missionary, as a person to get prostitutes off. I've seen uh, uh, pedophilia on the streets. I'm passionate about that. And I wish I could, but I think I'd get nauseated if I read to you some of the quotes uh, from some of these books. I think none of the, not this bill does not ban books. All we're asking libraries, tax paid libraries and K through 12 libraries is to remove those books and put them behind where, where it's for adults. If you're an adult 18 or over, you go and read what you want, but to have them sort of where candy is when you walk out of Walmart, you know, down low. Uh, let me just give you, and I'm paraphrasing, otherwise I'd choke. One of the books uh, talked about a nine-year-old girl who was pleasing her father. And it's very descriptive, very sexually pedophilia descriptive in pages and pages where she finally says, daddy, why are you crying? Did, did my love not matter to you enough? After she, he pulls his, you know what, out of her mouth. And then she goes on to explain other things that are absolutely disgusting. And so to have that available at K through 12 schools and have it available in the children's section, uh, Rob, uh, is unnecessary. And uh, the Supreme Court and, uh, uh, decisions have said, if there are obscenity like that, uh, we have a right to say we need to remove that from children and from minors. 
this is not a, a book banning bill, as many people believe. Um, it just move those away from from places where where minors can grab them and see them uh, without parental awareness, if you will. Senator, aren't, aren't there already processes to remove books from children's sections uh, that the local governments can make that determination or the local library boards? Why it, it seems like this session there's a lot of um, the state really involving themselves in local government issues. Why can't we just let the local governments function without the state, the centralized government, determining what's good and bad uh, for folks at the local level? Well, Chad, a couple of things. Uh, number one, K through 12 schools. Uh, if if these certain property tax things pass the session, uh, the, the legislature have taken over over 80% of the funding for K through 12 schools. So if I owned, quote unquote, and I don't mean own, 80% of a, a business, I think I have some say and people have elected us to do so. Secondly, as we sat in hours and hours and hours of hearings, and I respect librarians, I'm a bookworm myself, right? We're very book oriented uh, family. Uh, we didn't hear one librarian say voluntarily, we get it. This material is nauseating. It's sickening. Um, uh, we'll self govern. Not one time shout. I wish I'd heard it one time from any librarian in the state and we have not heard it one time. Secondly, the amount of efforts by parents and some teachers to try to do that have been struck down numerous times by, by local authorities. So there comes a time where we as elected officials and the legislature have to do what we need to do. And let me let me also bring in a thing that is interesting to me. Sex trafficking is a horrible thing. And some of these books, several of them actually, uh, uh, refer these children to a website called Grindr. Grindr is a, is a homosexual, happened to be a homosexual or queer or whatever you want to say, uh, website. But it also... Uh, shows young men or young boys or you know to get on that website that is a website that often uh, ends up in sex trafficking and and young boys um, being taken advantage of uh, i'm sorry there comes a place where that kind of uh, sexualization and an endangerment of our children who who in their frontal cortex don't have already the maturity to make decisions against such things um i i, I honestly don't see the problem they banned uh but other books like hat and a cat for years ago there was no outcry why is there outcry when legislators are trying to protect minors like we do with alcohol and everything? Why why is there an outcry when we try to protect minors against the sexualization of so, the yeah, think, you, just said that you said it's not a book ban, but now you just compared it to a book ban. I mean, is well, there was a book ban, so it's not a book ban. If you read the if you read the bill, well, let's, I, I let's, tell, let's, let's tell me where there's a book let, ban. Well, let's let's read the bill. On on this is uh this is the amendment. This is from section three. Of the uh, of Senate Bill 20, uh, 2360, as it passed the state Senate, it says, I quote, a person is guilty of a class B misdemeanor if the person willfully displays at newsstands or any other business establishment frequented by minors or where minors are or may be invited as a part of the general public, any photograph book, paperback book, pamphlet or magazine, the exposed cover or available content of which either contains explicit sexual material that is harmful to minors, exploits, is devoted to, or depictions or contains depictions or written descriptions of nude or partially denuded human figures posed or presented in a manner to exploit lust. So this, you're saying that this isn't a book ban, but this section of the bill specifically refers not just to libraries, but newsstands or any other business establishment where minors are in as a part of the general public. Now that's Barnes and Noble, right? Like when I when, when I take my kids to Barnes and Noble, we walk through all the grown up, the, liter the literature and the cookbooks and all the stuff that's there, the religion section, all of that stuff that's intended for adults to get to the general section. But my kids can walk. I mean, you could walk it. So in Barnes and Noble, and, and by the way, the bill also refers to even written descriptions of nude or partially denuded human figures. So even if we're talking about, I don't know, uh, William Faulkner, right? Light in August, where he describes sex. Right. It's not I wouldn't call it pornography. It's literature. They're talking about a sexual act between two of the characters. That book, Barnes and Noble would have to take if this bill passes, Barnes and Noble has to take that book off the shelf. No, because they do not. So let me let me how, let me, how, let how me can you say you. that? I'm looking I mean, because it yeah. says any any part that's that's frequented by minors or where minors are or may be invited as a part of the general public. My children are invited into Barnes and Noble. Yeah, but Rob, Rob, that's already in law. 
What you no, read is not. already unlocked. No, it's yes, not. It no, it's not. Yes, I'm it looking is. at the, the underlined section or written the description. Underlined section. Yeah, yeah, is what's the underlined being added to the, the law. Yeah, but everything you read, 90% of what you read is already in law if you look at it. And I know your listeners can't see this. The underlined section. I will section, include this bill that, with the podcast and people can yeah. read it for themselves. Yeah. Okay. So, Rob, then you go next. You got to take it in context. And then you say, as used in the section, Explicit sex material and then defines what that is. Right, but but, but, but you're, you're forgetting the or you part. You have to look at the, you have to say, look at the says, definition of what we're talking okay. about. The underlined section, which being added to the law, says yeah. either contains explicit sexual material that is harmful to minor or written depictions of nude or partially yeah. nude forms. This doesn't just apply to libraries. This does apply to private sector businesses. And it's anywhere where children are invited in. So that means... The grocery store that might have a rack of romance yep. novels by the door, they can't. They have to take those romance novels down. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, I, there's nothing banning here. It says where minors frequent, and let's look back. I'm old enough. I remember uh, VHS cassettes. Right? You go in. Uh, I'm not going to say the name of the store, but you go in and you rent them. And then these explicit sexual material ones with human masturbation, devi deviant sexual intercourse. Uh, all these things were sort of behind where kids couldn't grab them, right? They were sort of behind there where kids couldn't grab them. We're talking about explicit obscenity and pornography that are listed and already defined in code. Now, remember, this bill is still going to go through the House, still going to be refined. There's still amendments coming to it. What we are doing here is not banning books. There's nothing in this bill that banned books. But you do, saying, you, you do admit that this, this, this applies to the private sector as well. This applies to private sector businesses. It already did. That's already law. Right. But but you've added the part about books that even contain written – because the, the part of the law that we're talking about is the law that dictated that if you were selling uh, a copy of Playboy or something yeah. at a gas station, yeah. you had to have it shrink-wrapped or it had to be behind the counter or something. It couldn't just be sitting out where a kid could page through it. But you've expanded that part of the law to include not just pictures of, of nude people – but even written descriptions of sex. And now you've opened the door. Ernest Hemingway is going to also cannot written. be just sitting out on a shelf in a bookstore where killed children are. No, I don't agree. Written descriptions of nude, partially denuded human fiction in a manner to exploit. And there's a definition and code of exploit, sex, lust and perversion, not regular sex, not Song of Solomon. No, not but, but you're, you're skipping the part. Very defined. OK, code. but, but move defined along. So you and I have to disagree on that. It's a, it says it code. says. It, it adds in there. It also says, or written depictions. Yep, yep. Or written depictions yeah. of nude or partially denuded figures. Yes, and finish the sentence. In a manner to exploit sex, lust, or perversion. Yeah. Exploit what, what? is defined. Dis, expo, no, no, Rob. Exploit is defined in code. So these are all definitions in code that are already there. And it's already been held up all right. by the Supreme Court. That no, obscenity. I, I, I do not agree. No. I do not okay, agree. No, that's fine. We don't have to agree. We don't have to agree. Absolutely. But I'm trying to say, you know, we've gotten all these emails. Oh, my gosh, you're banning books. You know, I can't believe this. No, you're we're banning not. Books. Think, this this no, bill not. bans books. <laughs> Senator Murdahl, earlier this session, you supported Senate Bill 2260 that gave fundamental parental rights um, to, to parents. In that law, it says parental rights are reserved exclu exclusively to a parent or child without obstruction or interference from the state political subdivision, a government entity or institution. That includes C, directing the upbringing of the child, directing the moral and religious training of the child. How on one hand are we saying parents have the absolute right to determine what their, their, their children uh, can see and not see, but at the same time you're not trusting parents to make sure that they're seeing appropriate things at the public library or at Barnes and Noble and all those other things. Uh, I, I just, I think that there's some sort of, I don't, hypocrisy is not the, but it just doesn't seem to line up for me. On one hand, it's like, we trust parents exclusively. They're the, you know, the only ones we should trust with our children. But on the other hand, but we don't trust parents to make sure their kids are, are reading appropriate books. I go to my public library all the time. Uh, Evan's yet to see anything related to sex or genitals or anything like that, I assure you, because his mom and dad are there with them. So why, on one hand, trust parents with everything, but on the other hand, like, except for this, we the government, the state government has to be involved in this. No, we're not saying that parents, if they're such losers that they take their kids back to watch pornography, I'm not saying they can't do that. 
they can take them to that section, adult section, and do whatever they want. What we're saying is that it's uh, incumbent upon the state to protect our minors from pornography and obscenity. And when you look at pornography, when you look at what it does to the brain, and when you look at science, uh, science uh, over and over again, and scientists came in, lengthy testimony to show the brain damage to children by early sexualization and early uh, uh, depictions of, of uh, sex, for, sex for exploitation, and what it does to a minor, what it does to families, what it does to society, I mean, we could sit here and talk forever about it. If you as a parent want to take your kid back there and show them these things, show them little nine-year-old doing uh, doing uh, oral sex with her dad and later on punishing herself with sex, which is in this book. I talked to the attorney general. I showed him some of these descriptions that Rob was talking about in some of these books that I'm not even going to mention here because they're too horrible. And some of the photos that we were shown that is are in these books in K through 12 and they are in these books in public libraries. And he said, if we found that on a crime scene, that would be literally a crime scene where the nine-year-old is being used for sex. And and it shows clear definitions of if how to do that. If that's clear true, why, the, why of all the, these things. If you as a parent want to take your kid to learn those things, you can. But if we, that's as true, a, why, is it, why is it the BCI rating libraries right now? If these books are on the shelves and they're child pornography, then why isn't why aren't, wasn't the FBI rating libraries right now? If that's really yeah, exactly. out there. Yeah, exactly. Well, there is a, there's an agenda. The I'm not going to mention her name, but the lady that's in charge of sending these books out now for Library Association nationally has, a, has very clearly spoken her agenda of what she wants to do. There is an agenda in our nation to sexualize our children. And if anybody can come on the show and deny me that, then show me the proof. It's consistently there. And I wish that one librarian or the state librarian, for that sake, would have come into our committee and said, we will self-govern. Don't worry about it. But the, if you look at the testimony, our state librarian was asked, shown pictures and descriptions that we had in our committee and that I have right on my desk in front of me, is this pornography? And she said no. And then the same senator said, if you were an eight-year-old in your parent, would you think this is pornography? And it was horrific scenes, horrific scenes. And she said, no, I don't think it's obscenity or pornography. That saddens me, Rob and Chad. That saddens me that we as a society... We say all the time, kids can't do this. Kids can't drink. That's not parental rights. Kids can't do any of these things. Uh, Eighteen and under minors. It's it's it's, yeah, it's really of bills that say that. It's it's really hard without like specific book titles. It's uh, because some, sometimes I haven't read these. I'll books, send you so. some of those. I'll okay. send you some of those. I, I mean, and I've, I've I've certainly had my Facebook commenters, you know, throwing some examples in my face. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, taste. Some of this stuff's subjective. I mean, what's the famous quote from the Supreme Court? I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. It's Sometimes it's in the eye of the beholder. I think of Lolita, which is one of the greatest works of literature in the English language, mm -hmm. written mm -hmm. by Vladimir Nabokov, and it's about the exploitation of a young girl by an older man. And it's mm -hmm. got it's got some stuff in there that is confounding, that is disturbing, that is disconcerting. I mean, it's 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 terrible in a lot of ways, but it's supposed to be terrible. It's art. Sometimes that's what happens, and I'm, I'm very, very worried, again, when I read this bill, this is not just for the children's section. This is for any public space where children can enter. This is for the grocery store. This is for Barnes & Noble. This is for every part of the library that we're going to be censoring books that even describe sex. I think this bill is far more broad than what you're describing, Senator Mar Myrdal. Well, then I hope if that's so, then it goes to the House and the House bill comes to us and we will figure it out because I'm passionate about protecting our minors from this and seeing how it's destroyed families and destroyed their brains. I'm passionate. A, and I understand. I understand it's sensitive. I get it. I am for freedom of speech. I do not want to touch that at all. But I do think that that we need to step up and protect our minors from, from being exploited by sex, sex sexuality, by being exploited by these websites that are are using them by being exploited. We get that in judiciary all the time. It's horrific, some of the stuff that happens. You, you, and, Senator Myrtle, you, you brought up the internet. Um, I mean, what's next? Is the state going to start to decide what can and cannot be on the internet? I gotta be honest, I don't know a lot of teenagers who are going to the public library uh, to check out books uh, when they've got the internet at their hands. Um, I mean, is that the next step here that the state government's gonna protect us from the internet and the World Wide Web? Not. Of course not, Chad. That is not taxpayer funded. My my passion is, and if the and Barnes and Noble. My passion is this. I'm not talking about Barnes and that was already in code. We didn't change that, Barnes and Nobles. But what I'm talking about is taxpayer funded K through twelve and, and state libraries need to either start self governing themselves or 
absolutely, we need to protect our miners from this. I, it's it, just that simple. Again, when I when I talk to my, I mean, and it, my not's one of the largest communities in North Dakota. When I talk to my local yeah. library, there's been four challenges. I have I have been going to that library since I was a child. I have never once felt unsafe in there. I have never once felt that my kids were unsafe in there. And I, I you, you say you're for librarians. When I when I've spoken to librarians, they're being called groomers. They're being called, you know, people who Not are dispensing me. pedophilia. And I, I understand that. But how much Not of this is, is this really a problem? I'm, I'm looking around and I'm thinking to myself, where's the problem? Or is this is this just, oh. just a moral panic driven by Fox News and a lot of this other stuff where people get on and this idea in their head that, that librarians are trying to show kids porn? Because that's the implication here is that librarians are not self-governing, thus they're they're fine with giving children pornography. That's no, the argument. No, no, no. But, but but flip that, and we're being called book banners and all kinds of names too. That's part of the game, right? To be elected official and try to go through these hard things. I think I would love for the librarians to come back to the table and say, okay, how do we self-govern? How would we do this? They say they do, but if you saw the amount and hours and hours and hours of testimony that came into us from parents and from teachers that are gravely concerned, it isn't just one case, one book. We found over 40 books in, in, in uh, K through 12 schools that I would absolutely uh, say are obscene. And that means exploitation, not just sex, not just uh, reproductive stuff. Of course not. You know me better than that. Can I, I, I mean, can I, I'm, I'm sorry to kind of dominate, but we're, we're running out of time. No. This is, I think this yeah. is a really important question because if this is about protecting children, why don't any of these bills mention violence? Why, why, is, it, why oh. is it only only sex? That, that's that's oh. defined in here because part of what that makes me feel is, is that the problem here isn't that we're trying to protect children from objectionable content because if so these bills i i would hope would reference you think about a book like game of thrones right lots of sexual content in game of thrones the game of thrones series no question also a lot of violence but under this bill if we expurgated the sex scenes they would be fine for the children's sections cutting people's heads off and stuff and I worry that, that the problem here is not really protecting kids. It's just being uncomfortable with the expression of certain lifestyles, whether it's trans or, or lesbian or gay or what have you. No, it's not an expression on LGBTQ at all. This is this is pedophilia. This is other things. Hey, if, uh, you know, this is the what the bill that came forward. And again, I'm not the sponsor. This is a bill that came forward from certain areas, from sponsors, from certain areas of an enormous amount of parents that were concerned and finally came and said, can we do something about this? That's where it came from. We can, I mean, we had 931 bills that deal with all kinds of things here. So why doesn't it include violence as well? Don't ask me. I don't know. I didn't sponsor the bill, but they came forward and said, these are things. And they brought the evidence. And I mean, my pile is about 10 inches tall with, with the evidence, if you will, of, of things that are in schools. And I'm like, really? We're lacking in math and English and, 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 and social studies. And, and we, we, we allow these to come into our schools. And a lot of the librarians said, we, we didn't know they were there. Well, then do your job and see that they're there and, and, and self-govern. I don't think that's a hard ask. Um, but this I, whole this whole I, notion that we ban books, um, I'm sorry, Rob, I disagree with you. I, again, go back to the initial question. I mean, we have mechanisms in place. I mean, Rob referenced that there's been four books that have been challenged at the Minot Public Libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know of um, a lot of challenges going on. And we have elected local, locally elected officials to take care of these things. It feels like, again, it's people running to big government uh, Republicans, frankly, that want to get involved in all these local decisions moving forward. Why isn't there, I mean, examples of the school board in whatever town not responding to this and then getting voted out of office? I mean, if this is such a big thing. The other thing, I mean, you mentioned, um, you know, math and English school, you know, all these different issues with K through 12. There are. There's a lot of issues with behavioral health. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things going on. And rather than focusing on those, we're focusing on a few books um, that I, I agree. If, if they're as atrocious as you say, they shouldn't be in our, our school libraries. But there's a process in place without the unintended consequences that Rob has alluded to so often. Why can't we just let the process play out? And, and if they don't like the, the responses from their local officials, vote them out. Well, I agree with you. I wish we would do that on a lot of subdivisions, right? But eventually, when, when especially parents and teachers cannot get the result they want, they're going to go up just like an appeal process, right? And they come to the legislators. So I agree with you. This is a very difficult thing. And I agree with you that, yeah, why don't we focus on math and English and stuff? But how do you do that when you take so much 
of school time, and this is a podcast for another time, Rob and Chad, to deal with other things like socially uh, sort of construing these things. I go back to this. There is no doubt, absolutely no doubt in my mind as I've dealt with sex trafficking of minors and other things, that there's an effort and an agenda to break down the family and break down children, the sexual, sexualized children at a young age, and I think it's wrong. And in judiciary and other committees here, we have hundreds and thousands of pages of juvenile protections and limitations in law. I think this should be one of them. It's just that simple. Well, so Senator Myrdal, you, we, you, I asked for a half an hour. You gave a half an hour. And I, I want to thank you for coming on because I think yeah, I've been outspoken on this. I think you knew this was oh, going to yeah. be this was going to be a tough conversation. And I, uh, I thank you for coming on and having. I appreciate anyway. that, Rob. Always appreciate your honesty, and I appreciate a good uh, debate, and it'll continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Hi there, my name is James Walner. I produce and host the podcast Dakota Spotlight, a true crime podcast that tackles historical and unsolved crimes in the upper Midwest. Follow along with me as we search for a missing girl, attempt to solve a 45-year-old murder, and much, much more. That's Dakota Spotlight Podcast, anywhere you get your podcasts, or at inform.com slash podcasts. Well, welcome back. And I, I meant what I said um, during the, the interview we just concluded with, with Senator Myrdal. I, I could gra- There's a lot of people who know, who won't engage with critics. Senator Myrdal knew what she was going to get from you and I, Chad. And she came on, and I give her credit for that. But I will tell you, that was a... That was a frustrating interview because I am I am I have the text of Senate Bill 2360. I have read a lot of legislation over the years. I'm not a dummy. I know how this stuff works. They added a reference there there she is right. There is already in the law a prohibition on sexual material that can be available in public spaces. And it was put in there so that, you know, back in the day when there were nudie magazines and gas stations so that, you know, penthouse or something wasn't just laying open on the counter or something for kids to see to me that's fine i don't really have a problem with that the problem is is they've added even written depictions of sex which means that nora roberts you know uh uh i've never in my life read a nora i just i only know nora. i don't i, 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 I only know i only know nora, nora, nora roberts, nora roberts <laughs> <laughs> i only know nora roberts by, by reputation but i get nora roberts book wouldn't be there right i i I, I don't understand how she. Well, it's not a book ban bill. Well, I don't know. Like, it books, lot, uh, just about every book has a written depiction of sex. Like, if you're going to read about literature, it's going to be in there. And now Barnes and Noble has to what put? They got to put Faulkner behind the 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 bat wing doors like they used to do in Blockbuster. We had to go to get the porn. Like that's what we're going to do in Barnes and Noble now. Come on. Well, and she talked about Dr. Seuss years ago when, you know, the left was upset and banned those books. So basically, why can't we ban these books now? And then you can see she sort of caught herself like, oh, we're not supposed to be talking about book bans right now. to, To be fair, I mean, I'm frustrated with this across the ideological spectrum. We're dealing with this in North Dakota right now, but I'm. It ticks me off what they were doing to the Roald Dahl books. It ticks me off what they were doing to Dr. Seuss. R.L. Yep. Stein just came out and said his publisher has been going back through and and reworking his text. That is or, some or, Orwellian crap. Right. And it ought to stop. And I don't care. Republicans, Democrats, I don't care. It's got to stop. I, I agree with you 100%. And a lot of the stuff we talk about here is, you know, you think about it from if the if the other side was doing some of the things like determining uh, what can and cannot be said during the prayer what can and cannot be uh, read in the in the libraries what can and cannot be done with health care I mean we got to be careful about the side I mean I hate this as a progressive but the state government is getting involved in a lot of things this session for uh, you know two chambers who consider themselves conservative. Uh, I mentioned yeah. big government Republicans, but man, it feels like big government Republicans. They, a lot of those folks want to be involved in all of our moral decisions. I, I don't. Forward. Yeah, I, I thought I thought your point was well made. How they can go from saying parents have to be primary in their children's lives, which, by the way, I agree with it. I think you agree with it, although we might define that in some different ways in different circumstances. Yeah, the, the bill but, is problematic, but I think agree with the concept. Sure, sure. I mean, parents, but we, we go from that argument to this argument. Where suddenly I can't be trusted to monitor my child's reading in a library is 
absurd. I, I know every book my kids read, and, and not because I'm necessarily acting. They talk about them with me. They know I love books. I've, I am, like to think that I've engendered a love for books in them, and we talk about what they're reading. My daughter was just on the way to school the other day. She had just finished. In fact, she was late getting out to the truck because she was inside finishing her book, and she came out, and she was so excited to talk with me about it. And, she, and there's probably some sex in that book, too, but I think she's mature enough to read it. I don't think it was particularly graphic, but I'm in charge. I'm the parent. And so, like, in some situations, to your point, I'm, I'm getting off on a rant. To your point, though, like, if you talked about, like, in another circumstance, can you imagine if if, if Senate Bill 2360 or House Bill 1205, which is the other one we didn't talk about very much because it just arrived in the Senate, um, if those bills, instead of targeting sexual material, targeted uh diversity and equity and inclusion and some of these um you know buzzwords and, and tried to impose a regime of political correctness on the libraries who do you think would be screaming to the high heavens about book bans right yeah absolutely um it would be a problem um yeah i just think it's uh, again the, the 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 rationale that's being used here just doesn't make a lot of sense i think now, I don't want to be the, the local control guy because I think we both agree that people preach local control um, sometimes and then they don't other times. But we have mechanisms in place that can look at individual books in schools. And I mean, there's an elected school board. There's I mean, so for Minot Public Libraries had four That's challenges what, of books Four four uh, th three of which I think she said was just a matter of moving one book, a book from the children's section to the adult section. Uh, and one, I, I forget what you said this said, but it was it was four challenges over like eight years. So like average out like a challenge every two years. That doesn't sound and, and you said you didn't want to use a local control argument. I agree with that. I think a better argument is the where's the problem argument. Right. Why are we making laws in pursuit? Now, I think Senator, in fact, she did. She responded to it by saying, well, there is a problem. We have all these we have 40 some books that we found 40 some books that you found out of how many hundred public libraries that we have in this state um, and how many hundreds of thousands of books available in those libraries across the state. And you found 40 or 40 and to whatever. to focus in on the, you know, the, obviously the anecdote that she told about the book and the child and the dad and the sexual stuff. I mean, that's, that's really jarring stuff, but I mean, it's one anecdote of one book that I don't know what the book is. I mean, she didn't share the title of the book. Well, there, were, um, there was an but example. But the unintended consequences of what it means for all the rest, just because there's one example of this this terrible, terrible stuff. Um, I don't know. There was one example that was brought up. Um, I guess it's one that's drawn a lot. It's, it's a, this book called Lawn Boy. And it's um, it's a Bildungsroman, um, a, um, a coming-of-age story about a, a young gay man and at one point when he's when he's i think he's like 10 or 11 years old in the book he has some sort of a sexual experience with another like 10 or 11 year old and i again i have not read this book the parts that have been described to me are are a little graphic but in a coming of age story exploring your sexuality even at that young age is not uncommon that's life right. that's reality so I'm open to a debate about whether or not a book like that should be available in the children's library. And by the way, what is it? Because my public library has like a little kid section, but then they also have like a teen section and then they have an adult section. So should that book be available to second graders? Probably not based on the little I know of it. Should it be available to teenagers? I'm open to a debate about it. But right. again, the problem is we start focusing in on on anecdotes and ignore the fact that under these bills, it precludes a lot of the debate. Like these builds are going to come in and they define this stuff so broadly that librarians not wanting to be charged with a class B misdemeanor, by the way, which is the punishment in these bills, they're going to err on the side of taking content out. And that's censorship. Right. And it's book banning. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And, and also, I, I think, again, you know, right now, the, the legislative makeup is a certain way. And some of the things they're doing, I mean, like there is the bill that doesn't allow kids to go to drag shows. 
which again, I think parents can make this decision on what's appropriate or not. not by but the way, not, happens, not every not every drag show is the same. Some of them are, right. are, are risque. Some of them are just people in costumes singing, dancing, and having a good time. Right, but my, my point is, so what happens if a group of people who don't like kids going to gun shows? I mean, do do they like is the legislature going to say that that kids can't go to gun shows or you know it's just we just need to be careful when you're in power like the way these folks are right now at the state capitol uh, they're going so far on you know the other thing that i think is really interesting is the majority leaders hoag and lafour had an op-ed uh that was in all the papers didn't mention you know, this at all they, they didn't talk about book banning they didn't talk about attacks on trans yeah which although we should point out House Bill 1205 was the primary sponsor LaFour. is Senator Mike LaFour. House Bill 2360, one of the co-sponsors is Senator Hogue. So these aren't backbencher bills. And, and by the way, both bills passed by, well, here, I'm looking at 1205. Yeah, passed 6528 in the House. And uh, 2360, I think, only had like nine votes. Well, hold on. I'm pulling it up here. Yeah, I think uh, eight or nine against. Uh, eight or nine against. So uh, the four Democrats and a handful of Republicans. Um you know, these are not these are mainstream. It frustrates me because to me, this should they be don't a want to talk about it. They, they don't want the narrative coming out of this session to be about book banning and attacks on trans and some of these things. They want it to be about tax cuts and all these things because that they know that's what the public wants them to vote on. The larger the public, time, the larger public. This, yeah. But there's this vocal minority who wants to do these attacks. So, you know, when you think about. LaFour and Hull both had to win elections, right? right? And so is part of winning the caucus election, jumping on board on some of these things, putting their name on some of these things. Well, but I can't imagine this is what Burgum wants the story this session to be about. I, I can't. I, it's going to be really interesting to see because Burgum also wants to get reelected in. Uh, he hasn't officially announced, but come on, he's running for another term. Um, he wants to get reelected. So if these bills, one or both, makes it to his desk, and I, I imagine at some point, because these bills – are, are cover so much of the same ground at some point i'm assuming they're going to get combined um but it, once this issue hits his desk i'm really mm -hmm. interested to see what he's going to do and i'm glad that you brought up the political implications because it's a great jumping off point for a point i wanted to make do you know who the primary sponsor of senate bill 2360 is 2360 i don't senator keith bame from district 33 and how often have we used what happened in district 33 as a microcosm for what's going on in the North Dakota Republican Party. We have talked about this at length. I've written about it at length. The, the, his predecessor was another Republican, Senator Jessica Bell, used to be uh, Senator Jessica Unruh. Um, she lost at her party's district convention to, to Keith Bame. She lost at the June primary. Now, she was a very consequential lawmaker, reliably conservative, um, helped save Coal Creek Station, save, which would have been economically devastating for that part of the state if it closed. And she got replaced by Senator Keith Bame, who, since taking office, has introduced precisely two bills. He introduced this one, Senate Bill 2360, to ban books, and another one that was rooted in some election nonsense. So... I mean, this is what's happening. You talked about a vocal minority, yes, but they're the ones who are showing up in the candidate selection process for the North Dakota Republican Party. They're the ones who are putting people like Keith Bame, who are focused on culture war issues and looking at the list of bills he's introduced, not much else. And, you know, by the time they reach the general election ballot, they win because yep. in most of these, a lot of these legislative districts, particularly in the western part of the state, there's not even a Democratic candidate. So or people are wondering, like, where is this coming from? Where is the larger public appetite? Well, it's a small faction of very vocal, very active people who are, are pushing this. And and to think, I mean, the thing is, as much as I disagree with them, that's the, that's the game. We're governed by yeah. the people who showed up. Unfortunately, they're the ones who are showing up. And you're going to end up with legislators who spend less time on conse consequential legislation like Senator Bell, Senator Unruh did. You, know, you talk about saving the coal plant and what took her down um, was a bill related to trans sports. Transgender. I mean, it was right? a transgender sports yeah. ban. And she, Governor Burgum, vetoed it. She voted to sustain the veto in the Senate. Yeah. And, and so you think about how important that bill is and how many lives it affects versus saving a coal plant. 
But for some reason, the voters in District 33, not the voters, the primary voters, the convention voters, decided that that transports bill that, again, affects very few people was more important than her helping to save the coal plant and being a leader uh, for the fossil fuel industry, oil and gas uh, and coal in this state and being like she was at the table, right? I mean, she was at the table for District 33 and these important industries moving forward. And now you've got conversations about book bans and elections being stolen coming from the senator there. And I, I understand that, um, you know, I, I, I think it's I think it's I, I, I had the same reaction when I saw the letter of the editor or the column or whatever from the two majority leaders where they don't mention uh, these culture war bills at all. I think I think that's because they know that while there is a huge appetite for that among the noisy constituencies that show up for Republican conventions and that show up to testify on bills at the legislature, there's not a lot of appetite for this stuff in the greater North Dakota public. I think it's embarrassing for them. But, you know, either either they, they truly believe or they're they're pandering. You know, take your choice. Neither is particularly defensible. Well, and I also think the idea of attacking librarians as being part of some big, wide conspiracy to sexualize children is just sort of strange. I mean, I don't know any librarian who that wants to do more than just sort of do their job. Although I will tell you, the librarians are pissed off right now and, oh, yes. um, you know, are organizing and, uh, you know, the stuff that you said about the Minot uh, protest, which, by the way, I love the readout concept, um, and then the, the Bismarck one as well. I mean, they're engaged, and I think they're they're. I don't think it's a constituency that that normally has been politically engaged. Um, they will be now, um, now that they're being attacked. But I just i I can't imagine the librarians are part of this big conspiracy to sexualize our children. Well, that's I mean that's that's one thing I think that bothers me. And I asked Senator, and she said, "Well, you know, I'm pro First Amendment, and I'm pro I'm pro librarian." But then also she talks about there being like a like an effort to put pornography, which she describes as pornography, in the hands of, of children. Well, how how can you say that? Like how how can you say that there's this concerted effort that isn't just like a local problem, right? Because I mean, listen, librarians are a group of people. Any one person can be right. not a good person. But you're talking about we need statewide legislation. Because there's a concerted effort to put pornography in the hands of children. How is that not an indictment of of librarians? Like, how is that? I'm pro-librarians, but also they're trying to let kids... We need to have this law because they're trying to let kids see porn. There is a disconnect there. And we see that a lot, you know, when you... Like, when people are talking about schools, you know, I love my public schools, but here's all the terrible things going on. And often, they're what they're doing is projecting things they see on the internet that they think are happening in other states, right? Right. And now they're, now they're protecting North Dakota from these outside influencers that are coming into our state that likely don't exist in these other places, but they're seen on the internet or talk radio or cable news or, or these other things. Well, that was, that was something that... Um... I wanted when I asked her, like, how much of this is driven by a real problem in North Dakota, and how much is this is just because people saw, you know, um, the "Don't Say Gay" bill in in Florida or something, and thought, oh, we need to do something like that in North Dakota, irrespective of whether or not there's a law. I, I have a feeling that a lot of the people pushing this decided there was a problem and then went looking for evidence to support the problem, which is why so much of the argument in favor of these bills are these anecdotes about a handful of books across the state that may or may not. And again, I, I have a hard time judging a book before I've read it or had a chance to even look at it or even know its title or its author or anything. But I, I, I think people decided this was a problem. They decided this would be a good piece of activism that would rile up the right people. And then they went looking for anecdotes that would support the idea that there's a problem. So I think one of the things that's been most frustrating about watching this session is how often bills are being moved forward because of an anecdote somebody saw online or like literally hearing legislators at the podium when they say, can you give us an example? Well, I heard from one person who heard from another person who told us that this thing happened and they put in a bill. Right. And then, you know, we're not 
governing on, and we've got real issues here in the state that we should be dealing with. I mean, uh, we've got a bunch of money. We've got to figure out how to spend or give back to taxpayers, right? Well, yeah, there's I a mean, consequential there's a debate to be had about, you know, what should we do with the legacy fund? We've been spending a lot of the earnings. Should we be directing more of those earnings back into the principal? I was having a text message conversation with a lawmaker about that this morning because my, my print, my print column was about it. But I mean, it's, we accuse them of of distracting us with these bills. And I think that's right. I mean, how can I ignore a bill that's going to ban books, right? How can I ignore politicians that are are trying to gaslight me? And, I mean, I all due respect to Senator Murdoch, who I do like as a friend, but she is gaslighting us when she's either she doesn't really know what's in this bill or she is just gaslighting us by saying that, the bill doesn't ban books. I'm sorry. It bans books. This bill bans books and not just in libraries. And for, you know, she sort of said, well, this isn't my bill. I'm not a sponsor of this thing. <clears throat> but she you voted for it. She voted for it, right? She spoke I mean, in favor of it on the it. floor. Also, yeah. also, uh, there's another part of this. How much is this going to cost us in legal fees? Because if these, if these bills become law, people are going to sue. I don't, I, don't Rob, know if, gonna, I don't know if it's going to be. Those, those lawsuits are already lined up. There's attorneys from around this country that are biting at the bit. Sure. To, and, and here's, and if you're a librarian. Uh, by, by, the, by the way, not, not just not just activists. You don't think like Barnes & Noble is going to maybe maybe hire a lawyer? You don't think Walmart? They make money selling books. Do you think they're going to appreciate this? Because, yeah. uh, well, because again, whatever Senator Murdoch says, this applies to them. And this this is a a severe restriction on the sort of material that they can make available, you know, in in the aisle that's two aisles down from the toy aisle. And I and I just keep going back to, and I know it sounds like a joke, but like, does the legislature know about the internet, right? Do they? I mean, the, there's no if a young person wants to see inappropriate material they're going to find a way and it's not going to be through the public library quite frankly so how uh, far does this go let, let's be honest kids were finding access to inappropriate material before there was an internet yeah I mean, how many how many how national many, geographic man how many how, <laughs> national geographic how many kids found their dad's playboy under the mattress or something i mean i i'm not saying that's okay but Man, I, I don't sometimes I wonder what do you think we're protecting kids from? And by the way, how many of these parents were outraged about some book, bought their kids Grand Theft Auto, right? Or have their kids playing, you know, Call of Duty or something, and just murder playing Doom and just murdering people and all that stuff. And by the way, I don't have a problem with those things. I don't want to censor video games either. I don't want to censor it's up to you. You're the parent. You decide what's what's appropriate for your kids, right? I know what's appropriate for my kids. I let my kids the Lord of the Rings doesn't have any sex in it, but man, they kill a lot of orcs. Um, yeah. And I, I let my, I, I love Tolkien. I let my kids in on on the movies and the books at an early age. I, I deemed that that was appropriate. They are violent though, but that's I don't know. That's a choice that I made. Yep. And and I and again I go I told you I think off air when I was growing up my parents thing was uh, nudity is not going to scar you for life, but some violence that you're going to see will. They were much more. Um, about keeping me away from violence than they were about nudity. Now, of course, some of the sexual content that Murdahl was describing, my parents weren't, wouldn't have been okay with that. Right. Uh, but seeing a boob here and there, but would not have scarred me. Yeah. I, or, or, or a written depiction of, of, a, yeah, of, a, of, a, of a boob, boob or, or sex or something. I, uh, so here's, here's I, one of the greatest things that happened to my, 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 mom, my mom's brother, my uncle. Um, we went to visit him in California. And he said, here you go, Rob. And he handed me a paper sack full of paperbacks from the golden age of science fiction. Here I am, 11 years old, and all of a sudden I've got Robert Heinlein, Isaac Asimov, uh, just these, 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 you know, people probably, I mean, some of that stuff hasn't aged so well. But, you know, you read it, they're not politically correct. You know, I, I, I tell people that one of the most influential books that informed my political outlook is The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, which is about a... a the moon is a penal colony and they revolt against the earth. And there's all sorts of stuff in there about libertarianism, but also like plural mar marriages, um, all sorts of different marriages. Cause he's imagining like all these cultures from yep. earth and they develop their own culture on the moon. What would they look like? You know, there's a, there's a disparity between the number of men and women. So how would they accommodate for that? And boy, how they accommodate was, was same sex relationships and plural marriages. And I was reading about this stuff when I was 12 and I think I'm okay, Chad. 
Rob, so, and you ended up not being gay or in a marriage with multiple women, correct? I, even though I, you read about them, I, even though I read about them, I have Woo! never, I, 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 I have never, not that I have never felt uh, any attraction to another male. And uh, and frankly, not that I think there's anything wrong with that. And frankly, I think one wife is enough of a pain in the ass. So um, I don't need. <laughs> I'm not talking that. <laughs> you like listen to your podcast? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Boy, that's. That was ill advised. I'm going to edit that part out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's where we're at. They're book banning bills. They're absolutely. And by the way, House Bill 1205 does not. I should because we've we've mostly focused on the Senate bill, which by far is the worst of the two bills. But neither of these bills are right are okay. But I I should note that the um, the House bill, although it doesn't apply to the private sector, doesn't. Just apply to the children's section. I'm reading directly from the bill. It says, I quote, a public library may not maintain in its inventory books that contain explicit sexual material with sexual material, explicit sexual material, including even written dep depictions of sexual intercourse or sexual activity. So I don't know anywhere how that's, in the whole building. anywhere in the whole building. It's a public library here. Let me read it again. A public library may not maintain in its inventory books that contain explicit sexual material, which includes books that just describe sexual intercourse. Anywhere in the library. The entire romance section, is the Twilight series is going to be thrown out, right? Hemingway, Fitzgerald, they're all gone. How, for, it's like, but this isn't a book. This, uh, is, this is just about protecting the children, Chad. I will tell you again, the obsession with this legislature on sex and uh, is is... It's borderline bizarre. And I would, again, I would I would be more willing to believe that this is really about protecting children if they were talking about violence or some of the other themes that can be in books, right? Because under this, Tolkien, which doesn't have any sex in it at all, but a lot of violence, that's fine for the children. It should be. I don't know. Read your kids The Hobbit. It's a great book. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you just like this subject because you get to nerd out with different author names and you uh, have talk no, about your sci-fi collection. I love I love books. I love every I love books. Yeah, I do. I read I read constantly, and uh, I'm not apologizing for it. So, all right, well that's it, Chad. Thank you so much for coming back. It was a delight to do this with you again. Not that Ben Ben does a great job. I really enjoy having Ben on as well. But it's always nice to have. Yeah, you back. and again, sorry for the uh, the IT folks at the forum having to yeah. deal with this bump. That they're going to as, as soon as I get off the air, I'm going to send them an email. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Here it comes. Rob, it's fun. Uh, I look forward to maybe doing it again post session. But I tell you what, try, if I would have had to do this podcast once a week to talk about this session, I think my head would have exploded. Yeah. So uh, I, I appreciate uh, we'll do it once every few you months. Know, I, my, my wife can testify like how sometimes I'm just depressed. Like I just walk away from the computer. Like, why? Why? <laughs> Do I have to write about these things? I would rather write about the tax code, but no, I'm writing about this other stuff. Well, I tell you what, one one person who is is it, like in a much better place now than she was two years ago is Erin. My wife is just happy, like every day <laughs> that she's not in the Senate. She talks about her. how miserable she was two years ago. Whist whistling on her way to work. Yeah. <laughs> not Not my circus, not my monkeys. Yeah, she misses some of her friends at the Senate, but in the House. But uh, overall, I think she's she's happy to not be there. All right, Chad, thanks for your time. As always, right. we'll talk again. Did you know Forum Communications Company has a robust podcast library? At inform.com forward slash podcasts, we have everything from politics, sports, true crime, outdoor adventure, and more. Visit inform.com forward slash podcasts and explore them all today.